Hello Grade 11s. In this series of lessons called a Wavefront, we will learn how light travels as a wave and learn about the diffraction of light. In the 1600s, two very brilliant minds worked on the problem of what light is and came up with different theories that disagreed. Disagreement between scientists has often happened in the history of science. The debate continues until someone finds new evidence for one of the theories. This lesson shows how diffraction is best explained by the wave theory of light. In the work you've done up to now, you've learned that light travels in straight lines. Look at the rays of light coming from behind that cloud. You've also drawn arrows in ray diagrams to show the path and direction of the light. People long ago wondered what light really was. Many people, even nowadays, think about light as a substance like air. They think that when you open the curtains in the morning, light comes into the room as though it were air coming in through an opened door. Light is not really like that at all. In the 1600s, people agreed that light travels away from a source like a candle flame, bounces off objects, and goes into our eyes. But what is it that travels really? The famous scientist Isaac Newton did many experiments with light and he believed that one can think of light as a stream of small, fast-moving particles that can bounce off objects. This is what you are seeing in the picture. Streams of particles come from the candle and bounce off the book. When the light enters our eyes, we see the book. That is what Newton believed. A Dutch scientist, Christian Huygens, lived at about the same time as Isaac Newton and he disagreed with Newton. Huygens had studied waves on water and he knew that water waves travel outwards from a disturbance and that they can bounce off objects too and then travel in a new direction. Of course, neither Newton nor Huygens nor anyone else could see either Newton's light particles or Huygens' light waves at that time. For over 100 years, many people believed in Newton's theory of light because he was famous for his explanations of force, motion, and gravity. They thought of light as if it were a stream of bright bullets from a machine gun. In 1801, a brilliant scientist and doctor called Thomas Young did some experiments that he could not explain by using Newton's ideas, but that he could explain by using Huygens' ideas. In a dark room, he had a bright beam of sunlight come in through a small hole and pass through a narrow single slit onto a screen. He saw a fuzzy bright line on the screen. This is what you would expect. Then he made another slit, very close to the first one. What do you think he saw? You'd expect that he would see two bright lines next to each other. Well, here's a surprise. He saw a whole lot of bright lines with dark lines between them. If we looked close up, we would see a row of light and dark lines, like this. The bright and dark lines are known as fringes. Newton's theory would predict that we would see just two bright lines, one for each slit. But that did not happen. Something was wrong in Newton's theory of light. Thomas Young realized that if light travels as a wave, he could explain what he saw. We'll need a ripple tank to understand what Young was thinking. Let's go to the laboratory and see it. Hi guys, I have the ripple tank set up and ready. Have a look. Here we have two connected vibrating spheres that are placed on the surface of the water near to each other. It is important that they vibrate at the same rate as each other and are in phase with each other. These are called coherent wave sources and produce two sets of circular waves that have the same frequency and wavelength. These circular waves interfere with each other as they radiate outwards. Have a careful look at the patterns the areas of constructive and destructive interference form in the ripple tank. Can you see these regions where the ripples seem to have flattened out? These are the regions where destructive interference has happened, and so the waves have cancelled each other out. Notice that the destructive interference happens along evenly spaced out straight lines that radiate outwards from the sources. So this interference pattern is very regularly spaced. 
just as we found for our interference pattern for laser light. In between these regions of destructive interference, there are regions where the light and dark shadings of the ripples is very clear. These are regions where constructive interference has happened. And so, the waves have added together at these positions. This constructive interference also takes place along regularly spaced straight lines that radiate outwards from the source. We can draw lines on the diagram to show the regions of constructive interference. These lines are called nodal lines. Let's go through that again using this computer simulation. These two red squares are point sources of waves. Now imagine that we put a screen upright at the end of the ripple tank. Now let's run the simulation. We can mark the screen to show where the nodal lines cross it. You see these black dots. They mark places where the nodal lines meet the screen and destructive interference happened along the line of the screen. These red dots mark places where the anti-nodal lines of constructive interference meet the screen. So the screen will give us a record of where the constructive and destructive interference happened along the line of the screen. At the places where constructive interference happens, the screen receives a lot of energy from the wave, and the screen is bright. And at places where destructive interference happens, the screen receives little energy from the wave. Notice that the two sources move so that they each create a crest at the same time. We say that the two sources are coherent when they are in phase. In phase means that they produce crests at the same time and troughs at the same time. If they were not coherent, the crests and troughs would not make the nodal lines in the places we saw on the screen. Now water waves in a ripple tank are not light waves, but we can see that the water waves produce the same sort of high and low energy lines on a screen that Young saw. This strengthens the idea that light travels and behaves as waves. Let's try this as an exercise. In the lesson one notes, you see overlapping circles that represent waves that come from the beads in the ripple tank. A black circle represents a wave crest and a light gray circle represents a wave trough. Now use a pencil to lightly draw the lines where the crest crosses the trough, that is, where there is destructive interference. You are drawing the nodal lines. Then use a red pen to join all the points where a crest crosses a crest and all the points where a trough crosses a trough. You are drawing the anti-nodal lines. If you put a screen in the vertical plane at the top of the diagram, you'll get red spots where the anti-nodal lines meet the screen and black spots where the nodal lines meet the screen. So where have we got to in this lesson? We have seen that a wave theory of light can explain the dark and light fringes on Thomas Young's screen. In the lessons on electromagnetic radiation, we simply stated that light is an electromagnetic wave, but now we have some evidence for that statement. Light has frequencies and light has wavelengths, and so light is indeed a wave. However, that's not the whole story. About 100 years after Thomas Young showed that light travels as a wave, Albert Einstein showed that sometimes you also have to think of light as a stream of particles. You'll learn about that in grade 12. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.